All right, so section 3.3, we're talking about common factors of polynomials. Here's an example of a polynomial, 4m plus 20. And what you should know already is that when we are factoring something, we're pulling out uh, the factors, right? We're, we're writing it in factored form. This is not in factored form either, uh, as we know, because we're adding things. We're not multiplying two things. You can multiply two or more things in factored form, right? That's what you're going for. It can be a number. It can be a monomial, a term, or it can be an expression, factors. So because there's a plus here, we're not multiplying two things, we're adding two things, so we're going to try and factor this. A common factor from 4 and 20 would be what? What's a common factor there? 4. 4 is a common factor. So in order to factor something, we're going to pull a 4 out of each term, and we're just going to write it over there. Okay, and our next line, we're going to factor it. So the 4 is basically going to be drawn out of there. Now, are there any other common factors in between these two terms? Because we're looking for common factors between all the terms. So the answer is no. There's no common factor there. There's an m in this term, but there's no m here. So it's not common. So what we do is once we've got the common factor out, we write a bracket to show that we are going to now be multiplying this 4, the common factor, times whatever is left over when I remove the factor from this expression. So you literally do this. You take each term and you divide by the common factor that you pulled out. And whatever is left over, you write in the brackets. So 4m divided by 4, well, those 4s cancel out, or divide out, and you're left with just m. And you're adding something here. So you do have to transfer this plus down here, okay, if this is a positive here, right, it's, we're dividing by a positive 4, and you have to put the plus down here, divide by the positive 4 here as well, and so 20 divided by 4 is 5, you need, if you have two terms here, you need to have two terms in one of your factors there, okay, did you guys get 4 times m plus 5 as an answer, yes, no, nod or shake your head, all right, so let's do another one. What about 6 minus 15a? Actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this a negative 6. So I want you to go ahead and try to factor this expression, pull out a greatest common factor from each term, and the terms, of course, are negative 6 and really a negative 15, you want to consider, with that negative sign in there. So what's the common factor between those two terms, and I'll go ahead and give you a, a second to try that. Who got that for a final factored expression? Anybody get exactly that? Okay, many of you didn't. Did, did you pull out a positive 3? Anyone? Yeah? Pull out a positive 3? Okay. That is um, not surprising. Okay. You look at these two numbers, 6 and 15, and the thing that, that the factor that should jump out of you is 3, totally. Not 6, because 15 doesn't divide evenly by 6, right? So 3 is your number, yes. But what you also want to look at is the fact that both terms here have a negative sign. So really, a negative 1 is also a common factor. So when you take the fact that negative 1 is a common factor, and positive 3 is also a common factor, you want to take out the greatest common factor, which would be negative 3. If you took out a positive 3 over here, you'd be left with negative 2 minus 5a. So some of you might have got this, right? Now, the, the problem is, is that when, you, when you're done factoring, you want to take a look inside your, your factors and see if there's anything else that's still common, because then you didn't take out a greatest common factor. And so because each term has a negative sign, then you would realize that, hey, you know what, I actually need to take out this negative sign right here, and so that would make it negative 3. That's a positive 2 now, and then plus 5a. So if you did it this route, that's fine, but you'd have to realize that if you had a negative on all the terms, you want to take that out of the common factor. Okay? Okay, that one was a, that one was a bit, a bit tricky. All right, so um, to check our answers, and we've, we went over this uh, earlier, but to check your answers, and you always should check your answers, it doesn't have to be a formal check, 
but you should at least do a mental check to see if it's reasonable. And what you want to do is you actually want to multiply the factors out to see if you regain your original expression. So that's what we do. And of course, what we remember is when we multiply a term times a polynomial is we have to distribute that number to each term inside the polynomial. Okay, multiply by each term. So this becomes four times m is four m, that's this one. And four times a positive five would be plus 20. You do have to make sure that there pluses in there. And is that the same as the original question? The answer is yes. So you've got it right now. Be careful not to circle uh, too many answers. Your check does not have to be circled. Please circle your answer when you're doing your question. There, there's the check. Okay. Everyone see that? So factoring is basically dividing out, and checking would be multiplying back in. All right. Now, uh, do you remember the multiplication rules for two binomials? Like, let's do x plus 1, and then times another binomial, x plus 3. If you were asked to multiply that out, how many of you remember how to do this? All right. Some of you. Now, you may not have seen this before. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. But when we multiply um, a polynomial times a polynomial, what we have to remember is that we have to distribute each term to every other term. in the second polynomial. So, so each term has to be multiplied um, by the one in the second polynomial. So I should actually just add here each term in the first polynomial to every term in the second polynomial. That's, that's, a, that's a little more so we have to distribute each term in the first to every term in the second. So it's just like we're distributing a single term across the polynomial, but we have to do that more than once. So let me show you how that works. So here we would go, the first term has got to multiply by this first term over here, okay? So that's the first, the first terms have to multiply together. And that's going to be x times x is x squared, right? Okay. Then this term also has to be multiplied by all of the other terms in this polynomial, which is the other one is 3. So then you multiply the, and these are, notice that this and this are on the outside. So first and then the outside term, outside terms. Okay. And those, these words are actually going to be important as well for you. So what's uh, x times a positive 3? That's plus 3x. This term right here, then, is multiplied by every other term in the second polynomial now. So now you move on to the second term and make sure that those, that one gets multiplied by those terms as well. And so that's the, those are the inside terms now. And I guess I'll use this color still, so that's plus x, right, 1 times x. And then this one has to be multiplied by the other one as well. That's the last terms. Last. And, of course, that would be plus 3 times 1 is just 3. No x is just 3 times 1. All right, so there's a couple things that you need to uh, remember here. Uh, when multiplying a binomial, which this is a binomial, there's two terms, times another binomial, you distribute each term in the first to each term in the second. Uh, a shortcut way to remember that is by using the, the uh, first letters in each of these terms. What does this spell? FOIL. Has anyone ever heard of the FOIL method of multiplying binomials? No? Awesome. This is your first time hearing that. Awesome. So, FOIL. 
So I'm going to be referring to the FOIL method. And that's just a little shortcut that a lot of students um, like to, uh, like, it's an easy way to remember how to distribute. Okay, so that's the FOIL method. The first terms get multiplied, then the outside terms, then the inside terms, then the last terms. That's, that's how you can make sure that you multiply everything you're supposed to. So that's the FOIL method. Now, are we done here? Is this a final answer is my question now. Okay, the answer is no, that's not a final answer, because I can simplify this a bit more. Does anyone see how I can simplify this expression? Sorry? Okay, so you, you're saying I can maybe put this 3x with, with the other 3? Okay. You're right. Okay, you corrected yourself. That's good. Now, why, that's good. I'm glad you said that. So, just before we erase this, why can I not add 3x and 3 into one single term? Why can I not just collapse that down? Because they are what? They are they're unlike terms. You can only collapse down or simplify into one term like terms. Okay? So, it's not the 3. But, you can combine that 3x with this x over here. Those are like terms, okay? So 3x and x are like terms. They're like terms. So they have the exact same variables, so variable or variables, with the exact same exponents on those variables. Like terms. That's important. If you have any like terms in a polynomial expression, you need to combine those things in order to be simplified. So if we can combine those, what that means is that there's no other like term for x squared, so I just write down x squared. These two can get uh, combined. So if you have three x's and you add one x, how many x's do you have in total? Okay, do you have three x squared? Or something different? I heard three x squared. What? Three x cubed? Okay, we're going to have to try again, actually. Those two aren't quite right. Now, if you're multiplying 3x times x, it's 3x squared, what you said. You wouldn't get 3x cubed out of this at all, but if you're adding something, think of these x's, think of these like they're actual things, like fruits or something, like x fruits, I don't know. Or x-rays from the, let's say x-rays, okay? You have three x-rays here, and you have another x-ray over here, and you put them together. How many x-rays do you have laying on the table? Three, and then you have one more of the same thing. Okay, so this is 4x. Yeah, you just simply add the numbers in front, like terms. And then 3 is uh, a, a lone term there, so we just. Three. So this is how we, uh, that's how we would express that polynomial, the simplest, simplest form. The other thing you want to do is, and like I said, I'm not going to necessarily be marking this wrong right now, but you always want to write the, um, the variable with the largest exponent, that one first, then the variable with the next largest exponent, next, and then the constant last. Okay? So this is called, the order of this is called descending. Order of the variable. Okay? descending order of the variable. So that's how you're going to want to write a polynomial. Okay. All right, so we're going to get more into this. More into, We're going to factor this type of trinomial into two binomials. We're going to do that next section. Okay, so that's coming up next. What you need to be able to do today for this section, 
when you are looking at a trinomial or a polynomial that has more than more than that, you want to just pull out common factors. That's all I'm really worried about for you today. So for example, this one, 5 minus 10z minus 5z squared. Okay, if I asked you to factor that, then really all we're doing in this section is pulling out a greatest common factor. Okay, so GCF. That's all we're doing. We're going to get to the, uh, the next level on the next section. So for this example, what's the common factor between uh, each of these terms? 5. Very good. So 5, we'll pull 5 out. Anything else? Like is there a Z in each term? Nope. Are they all negatives? Nope. So 5 is 5Z. Okay. Now, what's 5 divided by 5? One. This is very important. You have to put a one there. You can't just leave it blank. You can't say, oh, the five cancels out. It's gone. No, it's five divided by common factor of five is one. So you have to put that there. Now, what's ten, negative 10z ten divided by positive five? What's that going to be? Negative 2z. And then negative 5z squared divided by five is negative... 1, z squared, or just z squared. Yeah. Okay, and there's your factor in form. This section also talks about algebra tiles. Um, you, you do not need to use algebra tiles. Like I said at the beginning, before this lesson, um, uh, not many students gravitate to the algebra tiles, so we're just gonna we're just gonna spend the extra time just working on, uh, you know, basic. Uh, factoring methods here, so you can get good at that. If you want the algebra tiles, uh, if you want to try them, you let me know and I'll get you a set. And I'll show you how to work them. Any questions so far? Let's do one more tougher example. Uh, actually, I'm going to get you guys to do this one and see if you can uh, see if you can do it. So, this here is the polynomial it's not going to be simplified. And what you're asked to do is to simplify the polynomial first, then factor it. So I'm going to give you a minute to do that. I'll do the work on the screen here with the frozen, and then I'll show you my work in a minute. Okay, so give that one a try. You have to Simplify the like terms first, then pull out a common factor. Okay, see what you can do. All right, so I'll show you what uh, what you're to do here for this one. Okay, so what I did was I looked at the x squared terms. Okay, there's one here, and there's one over here, and a positive one x squared minus one x squared. That means that the answer, when you simplify those, 0 x squared. That means it's gone. That's when you don't have to write that term at all. Okay? Completely cancels each other out. So the x squared term, gone. Then I took a look at the x terms. There's a positive 6x and a negative 2x. Those can combine to give you 4x. See that? 6 minus 2, 4x. Then I took a look at the constant terms here. Negative 7 plus 3 combines to negative 4. Everyone see that? Any questions about that? So once you simplify, then you say, okay, what are my common factors here? Well, it looks like there's a 4 for a factor for each of these terms. Take that 4 out, divide each term by the 4, you get x minus 1. So 4 times x minus 1 should be your factored um, version of this, this term right here. Questions?